we stop the recording, I would then ask you to just summarize in perhaps one minute, and that's what we often use on um, YouTube and places. Just like, hello, I'm Anne from New York. Uh, I'm sick of being sick of it. Mm. About a, a minute, summary things that you're looking forward to, and your experience here. It's important that the perception of the hospitals and things like that, and mm. safety, um, somehow, what else have we got to break down those perceptions? Mm. People often say, what the hell are you doing flying halfway around the world to a third world country? Well, this is, if people either think I'm nuts, <laughs> or unbelievably brave and courageous, Maybe <laughs> I probably am. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself before you got, became ill, what you were doing. And before I became ill, I was leading a very normal life. Uh, I, I did not get sick that, uh, you know, from the onset of age and whatever. I got root canal, the root canal got infected, and the infection uh, settled in my heart. And I just got to the point where I couldn't breathe. They actually thought I had an upper respiratory infection, and that's what they were treating me for. And after being on antibiotics and whatever, um, they finally brought me in again and then uh, took an x-ray because they thought I had pneumonia and then found that it wasn't and put me immediately in the hospital. And two days later, they decided I needed a heart transplant. They were going to ship me out of North Shore Hospital in New York to Columbia Presbyterian in the city and to get a heart transplant. They're going to put me on a heart transplant list. And thankfully, uh, a surgeon who had been on vacation came back and he was like, whoa, stop. <laughs> Let's review this whole case again. And he was the one who decided that uh, they were going to replace the valve. But then as it turned out, when they did operate, he was able to repair it rather than replace it. And um, after that, I actually, uh, for three or four months, I constantly, I was constantly tired, constantly being sick of being tired. And then all of a sudden, like by June or July, I started to feel better. And then I was able to start exercising every day, which I had always done. Uh, I was e even able to go out dancing. Uh, this went on till about October. And then I started to go downhill again. And uh, so about, I guess, the beginning of November, I saw an article on your company, and I called about it. And uh, on Thanksgiving Day, my whole family was together, and I showed them all the information I had on it. And um, my grandson came over to me. My two-year-old grandson walked over to me and picked, lifted his arms up and said, Grandma, for me to pick him up. Okay, and as usual, I sat down and my daughter-in-law picked him up and put him on my lap, which is what had been going on since I'd been operated on. I haven't been able to lift my grandson. And in that one instant, I made the decision, I'm going to do this. Because if I can have a chance of lifting my grandson on my own, I'm going to do it. And that was it. I made up my mind. My children hadn't made up their mind, but I had made up my mind. So... And the doctors and your family, were they supportive of your decision? Yes, as it turned out, I went to my doctor and I said, what do you know about stem cells? And he said, oh yes, they're doing great things about it, great things with it, but not here. You can't have it done here. And I said, I know that. And I showed him all the information you had originally sent me. And um, he read it and he said, I just, his exact words were, I don't want you thinking that this is the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. If it works, it's going to work. But if it doesn't work, it's not going to work. You'll be no worse off than you are now. And uh, then I made an appointment, another appointment with him uh, for my son to come in with me because my son, is, uh, has, uh, my son is an engineer, so he has this mechanical mind. And you have to satisfy every bit of it uh, before he's going to let you do anything to his mother. <laughs> So uh, we went in there, and he was just, uh, he had questions galore that, uh, you know, he knocked at him, and that was it. He said, go for it, Ma. 
Did you have any concerns mm -hmm. about um, coming to Thailand? Okay, yes. Then also my children had decided that the one to come with me on this trip was, of course, the baby of the family. And she was the one I did not want to come with me because I was very concerned with a 22-year-old, you know, walking the streets over here. I had no idea where this was. Would she be escorted back and forth to the hospital?